वालों का सबके प्रति भारतीय भारत के संस्कृति मंत्रालय की तरफ से इस कार्यक्रम के आयोजक होने के नाते मैं आप सबका हृदय से स्वागत वंदन और अभिनंदन करते हुए आभार व्यक्त करता हूं और पुनः बुद्ध के चरणों में प्रणाम निवेदित करते हुए अपनी बात को यहीं पर समाप्त करता हूं। ऑन दिस ऑस्पिशियस ओकेजन ऑफ बुद्ध पूर्णिमा वी हैव अ स्पेशल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन मंगोलियन कंजूर विच इज थ्री पिटाका इन मंगोलियन लैंग्वेज विच हैज बीन प्रिंटेड बाय द नेशनल मिशन फॉर मैनोस्क्रिप्ट इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल सेंटर फॉर द आर्ट्स मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया a total of 75 sets comprising 108 volumes each of this rare text is being printed as a gift from people of india to people of mongolia and russia dr sachidanand joshi member secretary of ignca is here to tell us more about this noble initiative namaskar honorable prime minister of india mananiya shri narendra modi ji honorable heads of the states of different countries honorable minister mananiya shri kiran rijuju ji honorable minister mananiya shri prahlad singh patel ji his excellency the ambassadors of different countries the ibc general secretary dharmapriya ji all other honorable members of different societies of different academic bodies of different states esteemed participants on behalf of indira gandhi national center for the arts ministry of culture government of india i extend my warm wishes on the auspicious occasion of buddha purnima we feel honored that indira gandhi national center for the arts is presenting the mongolian kanjur today on this auspicious day as we all know that the mongolian kanjur the buddhist canonical text in 108 volumes is considered to be the most important religious text in, in mongolia in the mongolian language kanjur means concise orders the words of lord buddha in particular it is held in high esteem by the mongolian buddhists they worship the kanjur at temples and recite the lines of kanjur in daily life as a sacred ritual kanjur are kept almost in every monastery in mongolia the language of the kanjur is classical mongolian there is a history of bringing out these mongolian kanjur mongolian kanjur has been translated from tibetan whenever sanskrit originals were available the mongolian rendering was compared with them it was completed over 3 centuries in 1308 translation of the sutras began from 1507 to 1582 the major part of kanjur has translated in the regime of king altan khan from 1600 and 28 to 29 king lingdan khan commissioned the complete recitation of the jewels of kanjur it is called the lotus gold kanjur a copy of the lingdan khan edition was commissioned for east mongolian princess in 1650 in 1720 imperial red edition was xylophoned by the orders of emperor king zai of china according to professor rinchen During the socialist period 10 million xylographs were put to fire and monasteries were barefoot of their secret scriptures During 1956-58 Professor Raghuveer obtained a microfilm copy of the rare Kanjur manuscript and brought them to India and Mongolian Kanjur in 108 volumes was published in India in 1970 by professor lokesh chandra ex member of parliament now this edition is being brought out by the national manuscripts mission working under the aegis of ministry of culture government of india every volume will have a list of contents indicating the original title of the sutra in mongolian the mongols will be happy that the holy scriptures have come from the land of lord buddha professor lokesh chandra who is 93 years of age has 
devoted his full time to bring out these editions. We are really blessed to receive his guidance. He is dedicating his full time and ensuring that these editions are brought out well in time. His able disciple, famous Indologist, Professor Shashi Bala has contributed a lot in bringing out these volumes. We are thankful to these two stalwart scholars. We are happy that we are delivering these editions well in time despite the constraints created by the COVID pandemic. We have started this project in 2019 and we hope that this project would be completed in 2022 March. All these 108 volumes would be completed and each volume would have 75 copies. Until now, we have brought out 50 volumes. Today, we are presenting the 50 volumes set to the government of Mongolia. We are really happy that the entire Ministry of Culture, Government of India and other ministries have helped us a lot in bringing out these editions. We wish these editions would definitely strengthen our bonds and relations with the Mongolian people. We are happy that Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts has been entrusted this responsibility. We know that our efforts would not be halted they would not be hampered despite the challenges posed to us by the COVID pandemic. May God bless us all and give us the strength to complete this task well in time. Namaskar. Another equally important initiative being undertaken is the publication of the catalogue of Tengyur, compiled by late Professor Rinchen of Mongolia. Tengyur is compilation of commentaries on the Three Pitaka or Kanjur as it is called in Mongolian language. Along with Kanjur, this is also a gift to the people of Mongolia and Russia. We now request Professor Dr. Shashi Bala, Dean K.M. Munshi Center of Indology, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, New Delhi, to tell us more about the project. Namo Buddhaya. On the auspicious occasion of Buddha Purnima 2021, I pray from the bottom of my heart, may the dark clouds of pandemic, death and misery disappear. May our lives be guided by the words of the Buddha. Today is a great day when India is presenting two literary gems to Mongolia, the Kanjur and the Catalog of Tanjur. Mongolia and India are comrades in cultural and civilizational development for centuries. I have been mesmerized by Mongolian culture since 1967 when my father returned with enchanting and thrilling memories with Professor Lukesh Chandra. During my last visit to Mongolia in 2019, I was pained to visit the newly built monasteries which are not sanctified by the Kanjur and Kanjur. The head of our delegation, Shri Soniji, was amazed at the huge collections of manuscripts there. We met our ambassador, Mr. M.P. Singh, who told us that they need 70 sets of Kanjur for the monasteries. We came with a resolute mind. Shraddha Shri Soniji helped in execution of publication of the project. The member secretary and chairman of the IGNCA did the execution and the coordination of technical and academic details for swift and smooth execution of the project came as my responsibility. Mr. Ashok Wangdi helped as usual. Kanjur contains the words of the Buddha and the Tanjur contains 3,205 Sanskrit texts translated into Mongol. They are on philosophy, on logic, on metallurgy, on science and technology and many other subjects, even lyrics, by Kalidasa, like Mehduta and Kavya Darsh of Tandil. This catalogue of Tanjur was edited by me and it was made by Professor Rinchin with the help of Professor Raghuvira. Editing this is my homage to the two great souls. My humble request to the Honorable Tapasvi Pradhan Mantri Shri Narendra Modi ji is to please present 227 volumes of Tanjur also to Mongolia. The Mongol monasteries will be sanctified by the sacred texts. The effulgence of the Bodhi of the Buddha will reach the grasslands of the great Khan emperors. Namo Buddhaya. We now have for you address by Ms. Norman Chinbat 
Honorable Minister of Culture, Mongolia. Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister, Your Excellency, Minister of State, Culture and Tourism, Your Excellency, Minister of State for Minority Fair Youth and Sports, Secretary General of International Buddhist Confederation, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is a great honor to be part of today's event on the auspicious occasion of Buddha Purunima. And taking this opportunity, I would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to the kind invitation to attend and speak on this significant gathering. I also would like to convey our warmest greeting to everyone present on behalf of government of Mongolia and myself. Mongolia and India considers each other a spiritual neighbor and have been enjoying an age-long cultural bond despite the geographical distance. Today we are consolidating our relationship on the principles of strategical partners and implementing joint projects in various sectors. Last year we jointly celebrated the 65th anniversary of the establishment of our diplomatic relations. In 2019, President of Mongolia, His Excellency Hashmagyan Bhaktojak paid a state visit to India and made a joint statement together with His Excellency Prime Minister Narinda Modi. Within this joint statement, which is an important testimony for defining the modern relations between Mongolia and India, two sides noted the valuable role of Buddhism in traditional historical relations of two countries and agreed to continue strengthening that development. Mongolians got acquainted with India as early as when the teachings of Lord Buddha prevailed throughout the steppes of Mongolia. Historically, Buddhism was introduced to Mongolia more than 2,000 years ago, according to famous scholar Qavj Tsavadamdeng. During the official visit of His Excellency Narinda Modi, the Prime Minister of India to Mongolia in 2015, graciously presented saplings of the banyan tree and gifted the beautifully crafted Lord Buddha and his two disciples' uh, statue, as well as agreed to help digitalization of Buddhist manuscript of the Gandhandikshlin Monastery. These kind gestures are deeply appreciated as the vivid illustration of our common spiritual heritage and close feelings our two nations share. We Mongolians hold in the highest respect for India as the sacred land for Lord Buddha and the source of wisdom and knowledge. Travelers of ancient time used to note that Mongolian monks were studying at Nalanda University. These spiritual ties constitute also another basis for our multi-phase cooperation. Recently, I held a meeting with uh, His Excellency Mr. Patel, State Minister of Culture and Tourism of India, and exchanged the viewpoint on bilateral cooperation and agreement, and agreed to further strengthen and expand our cooperation in the cultural sector. Mongolia and India are working together to organize the Asian Buddhist Conference for Peace to promote amity, tranquility, and cooperation among the Asian Buddhists for the benefit and well-being of humanity. I'm happy to remark that our cultural cooperation has been expanding rapidly and many more projects are being positively discussed by relevant parties. I want to conclude my speech by expressing my gratitude to the organizers. I wish you a happy Vesak day and every success to this auspicious event. Thank you very much. I now invite Dr. Tandi Dorji, Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, Bhutan, and request him to deliver his address. On this most auspicious occasion of the UN Baisak Day, I feel truly privileged to express my warmest wishes to millions of Buddhists around the world who are celebrating this day. It is an important event recognized by the United Nations to acknowledge the contribution of Buddhism to the spirituality of humanity. For the Buddhist community, it is a sacred day to commemorate Lord Buddha's birth, enlightenment and death. This day is an occasion for us to reaffirm our vows to integrate in our daily lives the treasured values of the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Paths of Lord Buddha. These profound wisdom and values preached by Lord Buddha some two and a half millennium ago are a shining light that continue to guide us to become good human beings and responsible global citizens. As we celebrate this day, I hope the timeless values and wisdom of Lord Buddha's teachings 
will inspire us to work together in the spirit of one humanity to achieve the common aspirations of humanity. Above all, as Buddhists, it is our sacred duty to uphold and preserve the values of compassion, loving kindness, non-violence, tolerance and respect. Compassion and loving kindness are keys that open our hearts and minds to help all other sentient beings. These values are indeed a beacon of hope for humanity and a balm for the pains and sufferings that all living beings are going through. They provide us useful wisdom and insights to respond to the myriad challenges of contemporary times. As evident during this difficult time, it is only when the entire global community reaches out to each other with compassion and joins hands that we will overcome these unprecedented challenges and risks posed by the COVID pandemic. As a country blessed with the teachings of the Lord Buddha, our development philosophy of gross national happiness is to a large extent anchored in these values of Buddhism. Our actions towards the environment and the well-being of sentient beings have been instrumental in shaping Bhutan's national development and guiding its response to any crisis. In the face of rising fear, greed and ignorance amidst the surge in COVID-19 cases, compassion and kindness are necessary antidotes to the excruciating pains and traumas caused by the pandemic and a panacea to deal with the crisis. And when global leaders embrace these values, it will inspire the global community to work together for the common good. And during this pandemic, we have witnessed India and its leadership exhibit true compassion and altruism at a global scale. It is the rarest of the rare to see a country rise above its own needs and challenges to help other countries in times of their need by supplying critical medical equipment and sharing its vaccines through its noble initiative of Vaccine Maitri. Today, as India is battling with the surge in COVID-19 cases, countries around the globe are swiftly rising to the moment to support India's fight against the second wave of the pandemic. While Bhutan can offer little material assistance, we offer bountiful and fervent prayers for a quick recovery. Such gestures and support towards each other at this difficult time reflects our commitment to a peaceful world which resonates with the teachings of Lord Buddha. We are confident that given the resilience of the Indian people, India will soon overcome this battle against COVID-19 and emerge even stronger from the pandemic. Let us mark this year's Vaisak Day by serving others with compassion and solidarity in whatever way is possible, especially during these trying times of the COVID-19 pandemic. Together, we can sail through these turbulent times and reach the safe harbor of our shared future. I wish 2021 Vaisak Day a huge success and offer my prayers for peace and harmony to prevail on earth for all times to come. I thank you and touch the lid. We now have for you address by His Excellency Mahinda Rajapaksa. Commemorating the International Day of Vaisak. The mutual Buddhist heritage shared by our two countries has played an important role in the strong and friendly relations between Sri Lanka and India for centuries. The universal celebration of Vaisak is a sacred day that marks the birth, enlightenment and passing away of the Lord Buddha as we struggle to overcome. The fear created by the current global pandemic, it gives us more reasons to reflect on the Buddha's teachings that have given us greater insights into human existence and help liberate our minds from everyday struggle of life. The Buddha's profoundly wise teaching remain enduringly relevant, calling on every woman and man to impact others' life positively and to be awakened to reality. This message is especially significant and meaningful during the current pandemic, during which numerous lives have been lost. Many children, often 
and millions plunged into suffering. The global pandemic is our present reality. It has not only forced us to evaluate the meanings of life, but also to think about the way we live our lives. Therefore, it is a fitting time for us to use the Buddha's teachings to reconstruct the balance between creature and nature, not simply to survive, but to thrive in a global village that respects diversity, promotes harmony, and safeguards the free gift of nature to usher in peace and prosperity to all men, humankind. While the pandemic has demonstrated the transient nature of life and everything around us, it has also given us an opportunity to value life and peace within our own minds. As the Buddha has taught, unless we find peace within, we cannot radiate that same peace to those around us. This is the time when we as humans and as a collective of nations rise up to walk away from situations that promote conflict and transform our present distress into an opportunity to foster peace and harmony. It is time we look at each other through the Buddha's lens of love, compassion and forgiveness. On this Vesak day, I call upon the entire international community, particularly those countries and organizations which resources to give generously to those in need in the global fight against COVID-19 that represent the true hallmark of Buddha's teachings. At this stage in the pandemic, one of the most important priorities is to ensure equality in the availability and distribution of vaccines for the most vulnerable and marginalized people in the world. On this blessed day of Vesak, my desire is that although we may be challenged by this tragic pandemic, we as a global community can still rise above the body waters to bloom like a lotus flower. Let us all be guided by the three universal truths, the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path, all time tested teaching of Lord Buddha. I wish you a peaceful Vesak with safety and good health. Thiruvan Saranai. The Ministry of Culture and IBC jointly confer the Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra to distinguished personalities for promotion of Buddhist studies, literature, culture, arts and putting dharma in the service of humanity. We now have for you announcement of the Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra for the years 2019, 2020 and 2021 by the Honorable Culture Minister Shri Prahlad Singh Patel. The Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra was instituted in 2015 and is given annually on the auspicious occasion of Buddha Purnima by the Ministry of Culture Government of India and International Buddhist Confederation. It is given to honor prominent national and international personalities for their contribution to Buddhist studies, research, writing, dissemination of Buddha's teaching and preservation of Buddhist culture heritage. Twice in 2015 and 2018, the Honorable Prime Minister had confirmed the honor to distinguish awardees. This year, due to global pandemic, we have to hold the event virtually and could not give it in person. At it is my honor and privilege to announce and read the citation of the eminent personalities chosen for the Baisak Samman Prasasti Patra for 2019-2020 
and 2021. I now read the names for 2019. Bandarkar Oriental Research Institute, Pune. India for its pioneering work in preservation, printing, translation of rare and voluminous ancient Buddhist manuscripts. For 2020, Farah Deva Sakya Bongsa Pandita, Thailand, his scholarship of Buddhist philosophy, anthropology, and contribution to Buddhism in contemporary perspective and the ever changing realities of secular existence. Most Ben Jet Sunana Tenjing Palmo, UK, India for her profound understanding of the Dharma and its application in daily life. And third, Daso Karma Ura, Bhutan for promoting sustainability through the concept of the grass national happiness and preservation of Buddhist art and culture. Fourth, Professor K.T.S. Sarayu, India for his scholarship of Indic Buddhist philosophy and reviving its civilization connect through academic exchange. Part 2021, most venerable professor Dr. Dich Nahat to Vietnam for innovative approach to dissemination for Buddha's teaching through education. Most venerable Bhikkhuni Dhamananda, Thailand for her scholarship of Buddhist philosophy for understanding of Dhamma through her writing. Congratulations. Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute, Pune, India was founded on 6th of July 1917 and is named after Ramakrishna Gopal Bhandarkar, regarded as the founder of Indology in India. The institute is well known for its collection of old Sanskrit and Prakrit manuscripts. It has done pioneering work in preservation, printing, translation of rare and voluminous ancient Buddhist manuscripts such as History of Buddhist Tantras. The institute has one of the largest collection of rare books and manuscripts consisting of over 1,25,000 books and 29,510 manuscripts. It earned the recognition of scholars and especially those keen on study of ancient Buddhist texts as the favoured medium of research and publish their research. Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute, Pune, India is being conferred with Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra for the year 2019. Phra Deva Shaksya Vongsa Pandita, Thailand. Born in Nepal, he is also known as Venerable Sugandha and Dr. Anil Sakya. He is Honorary Rector, World Buddhist University and Vice President for Foreign Affairs and Global Engagement, Mahamukut Buddhist University, Thailand. He is widely recognized the world over for his scholarship and represents the modern face of Buddhism and acts as a bridge between the monastic's principled authority and the ever-changing realities of secular existence. Phra Deva Shakya Vongsa Pandita is being conferred with Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra for the year 2020. Jetsunma Tenzin Palmo was born in England and is the abbess of Dongyu Gatsal Ling Nanari, Himachal Pradesh, India. One of the first Westerners to be ordained as a nun in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, she is a brilliant teacher who is able to touch the hearts with her profound understanding of the Dharma and its application in daily life. She is also a powerful voice for female Buddhist practitioner. Jetsunma spent 12 years meditating in a cave in the Himalayas in India. Her biography, Cave in the Snow, remains a bestseller till today and was also made into a film of the same name. She is also president of Sakyadita International Association of Buddhist Women, the International Buddhist Confederation and several other organizations. Most Venerable Jetsunma Tenzin Palmo is being conferred with Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra for the year 2020. Dasho Karma Ura is president of Center for Bhutan Studies and Gross National Happiness Research Center, Thimphu, Bhutan. He is an alumni of St. Stephen's College, Delhi University, Oxford University, 
and Edinburgh University, UK. He is an acclaimed scholar, historian and writer and well-known painter in both traditional Buddhist art as well as contemporary art. Dasho Karna Ura is being conferred with Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra for 2020. Professor K.T.S. Sarau, retired as Professor and Head of Department of Buddhist Studies at the University of Delhi. An alumni of University of Delhi, he was a Commonwealth Scholar at the University of Cambridge from where he earned his second doctorate from Faculty of Oriental Studies. Professor Sarau has been a visiting professor and fellow at several international universities in South Korea, Taiwan, UK, France, Canada and India. He also authored and co-authored several books and his papers have been published in some of the most prestigious journals. Professor K.T.S. Sarau is being conferred with Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra for the year 2020. Most Venerable Professor Dr. Thich Nhat Thu is Vice Rector of the Vietnam Buddhist University. A prolific author, he has written more than 70 books on varied topics which have been translated in many languages. An alumni of Delhi University, he received doctorates from Allahabad University in 2001 and honorary doctorates from universities in Thailand and USA. He is widely known for innovative propagation of Buddha's teachings through education, cultural activities and charitable programs. He is also actively engaged in the inter-religious dialogue and promotion of peace and harmony. Most Venerable Dr. Thich Nhat Thu is being conferred with Vaisak Samman Prashasti Patra for the year 2021. Most Venerable Bhikkhuni Dhammananda is a Buddhist nun and abbess of Song Dhamma Kalyani Monastery in Nakhon Pathom Province, Thailand. Highly respected the world over for her scholarship, she is also known for her advocacy for women's right to nuns ordination and revival of Bhikkhuni Sangha in Thailand. She graduated from Vishwabharati University, India and received PhD from Magad University, Bihar, India. She has taught for 27 years at Department of Philosophy and Religion, Thamma Sath University, Thailand. She is a well-known author of more than 100 books on contemporary issues. Most Venerable Bhikkhuni Dhammananda is being conferred with Vesak Samman Prashasti Patra for the year 2021. We are extremely honoured to have with us Sri Narendra Modi, Honourable Prime Minister of India, to deliver the keynote Vesak address. The Honourable Prime Minister of India. Respected members of the venerated Mahasangha, Prime Ministers of Nepal and Sri Lanka, my minister colleagues, Sri Prahlad Singh and Sri Kiran Rijuji, Secretary General of International Buddhist Confederation, Venerable Dr. Dhamma Piyaji, respected scholars, Dhamma followers, sisters and brothers from around the world, Namo Buddhaya, Namaste. I am honored to address you all on the special day of Vesak. Vesak is a day to celebrate the life of Lord Buddha. It is also a day to reflect on the noble ideals and sacrifices he made for the betterment of our planet. Friends, last year also I had addressed a Besak Day program. That program was dedicated to all frontline workers leading humanity's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. A year later, we are seeing a mix of continuity and change. 
the COVID-19 pandemic had not left us. Several nations, including India, have experienced a second wave. This is the worst crisis humanity faces in decades. We have not seen a pandemic like this for a century. This once-in-a-lifetime pandemic has brought tragedy and suffering at the doorstep of many. The pandemic has impacted every nation. The economic impact is huge as well. Our planet will not be the same after COVID-19. In the times to come, we will certainly remember events as either pre-COVID or post-COVID. But over the last year, there have been many noteworthy changes as well. We now have a better understanding of the pandemic we strengthens our strategy to fight it. Most importantly, we have the vaccine, which is absolutely important to save lives and defeat the pandemic. The emergence of a vaccine in a year of the pandemic striking shows the power of human determination and tenacity. India is proud of our scientists who have worked on the COVID-19 vaccines. Through this forum, I would like to once again salute our first responders, frontline healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, volunteers who selflessly risk their lives every day to serve others in need. To those who have suffered and lost their near and dear ones, I would like to extend condolences. I grieve with them. Friends, by studying the life of Lord Buddha, there is mention of the four sides. These four sides brought Lord Buddha face to face with human suffering. At the same time, it ignited within him the desire to devote his life to removing human sufferings. Lord Buddha taught us, Bhavatu Sabba Mangalam, blessings, compassion, and welfare of all. In the last year, we have seen several individuals and organizations rise to the occasion and do everything possible to reduce suffering. I have also learned of the generous contribution of equipment and materials made by the Buddhist organizations. Followers of Buddha Dharma from world over. The scale, both in terms of population and geographical space, of the task is huge. Humanity has been humbled. By the outpouring of generosity and support from fellow humans, these actions are in line with the teachings of Lord Buddha. It manifests the supreme mantra of Appa Deepo Bhava. Friends, COVID-19 is certainly a major challenge we face. While we do everything possible to fight it, we must not lose sight of the other challenges humanity faces. One of the biggest challenges is that of climate change. 
reckless lifestyle of the present threaten the coming generations. Weather patterns are changing. Glaciers are melting. Rivers and forests are in danger. We cannot let our planet remain wounded. Lord Buddha put emphasis on a way of life where respect our mother nature is paramount. I am proud to share that India is among the few large economists to be on track to completing their Paris targets. For us, sustainable living is not only about right words, it is about the right actions. Friends, the life of Gautam Buddha was about peace, harmony and coexistence. Today, there are still forces remaining whose existence depends on spreading hate, terror, and mindless violence. Such forces do not believe in liberal democratic principles. The need of the hour is for all those who believe in humanity to come together and defeat terror and radicalization. For that, the path shown by Lord Buddha is absolutely relevant. Lord Buddha's teachings and the importance given to social justice can become a global unifying force. He rightly said, Nati Santi Paran Sukham. There is no higher bliss than peace. Friends, Lord Buddha was the reservoir of brilliance of the entire universe. From him, we all could draw light from time to time and take the path of compassion. Universal responsibility and welfare. Mahatma Gandhi rightly said about Gautam Buddha, and I quote, Buddha taught us to defy appearances and trust in the final triumph of truth and love, unquote. Today, on Buddha Punnima, let us renew our commitment to the ideals of Lord Buddha. I join you all in praying to the triple gem to provide relief from the testing times of global COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much. To propose the vote of thanks, I now invite Venerable Jang Chup Chodan Kensu Rinpoche, Deputy Secretary General, IBC. Thank you very much to give me this uh, opportunity to present the vote of thanks. On behalf of the International Buddhist Confederation, IBC, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, Bodh Gaya Temple Management Committee, BTMC, Asian Buddhist Conference for Peace, IB ABCP, Mongolia, and the International Buddhist Council, Bodh Gaya, and all those involved in organizing this Vaishak Buddha Purnima Divas 2021 and commemoration of UN Day of Vaishak. I express my heartfelt thanks to Honorable Prime Minister of India, His Excellency Narendra Modi Ji, for the beautifully crafted keynote address. Honorable Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, His Excellency Mahinda Rajapaksha, for his video message. Honorable Prime Minister of Nepal, His Excellency Kharga Prasad Charma Oli Ji, for his 
video message. Honorable Foreign Minister of Bhutan, His Excellency Kandi Dorji, for his video message. And Honorable Minister of Culture, Mongolia, Her Excellency Mrs. Nomin Chingbat, for her uh, video message issued to this holy event. I further express my heartfelt thanks to Honorable Minister of Culture and Tourism, Government of India, Shri Pralhat Singh Patel Ji, <coughs> for the special Vishak address and his insightful guidance as the chairman of the organizing committee. Honorable Minister of State for Minority Affairs, Youth and Support, and Ayush, Independent Charge, Government of India, Shri Kiran Rajiji Ji, for his beautiful address, and the Secretary General of International Buddhist Confederation, Venerable Dr. Dhamma Piaji, for his welcome address to the event. I express my deeply felt thanks to His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Mahanayakas of Sri Lanka, Sangharajas of Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, and all other prominent Buddhist leaders and the venerated Mahasangha of various countries. I further extend my deeply felt thanks to Siji Foundation and its legendary founder, Dharma Master Bhikshuni Teng Yen, Theravada Buddhist Council of Malaysia, Malaysian Buddhist Association, Buddha Light International Association Malaysia, IBC Malaysia, Vandani Indonesia, and all our, all our fellow Dharma brothers and sisters from Singapore, Australia, and elsewhere who donated generously to our Care with Prayer initiative with aid materials to fight COVID-19 second wave in India and Nepal. I express my thanks to all the dignitaries from Australia, Bhutan, Cambodia, India, Laos, Malaysia, Mongolia, Mexico, Myanmar, Nepal, Russia, South Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, and other places for their video messages we received for this holy event. Further, I extend my thanks to members of organizing committee, staff of each and every group involved in organizing this event, Venerable Sangha, those participated in chantings and meditation sessions, and those involved in preparation for Chiva offering, Pushpanjali, presentation of digitized Mongolian Kanjur and catalog of Sengyur. Last but not least, I express my heartfelt thanks to all those behind the scene important players unsung heroes. Without their hard work, this event may have remained a dream. Thank you to make this happen, particularly to the technical team that played very important role to streamline everything in virtual world to make this event accessible to the rest of the world. Thank you very much to all. Namo Buddhaya. Thank you. We now conclude this session. We will see you again in the next session, which will begin at 10.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time. Until then, Namaskar.